In Huddersgate, famed for its tram lines, up north where it's boring and slow, Stanley Bagshaw resides with his grandma at number four Prince Albert Row. Now near where Stan lives is a factory, which he frequently happens to pass, that makes sprockets and wheels out of copper and steel and motorbike parts out of brass. You could see it from Stan's bedroom window. It seemed most mysterious to Stan. There was smoke in the air and noise everywhere. That's the sound of hard work, said his gran. One day, Stanley Bagshaw was walking along by the factory gates when the works engineer shouted, Stanley, come here. Can you give me a hand, me old mate? The tea lady's off with the measles, and my tea break is long overdue. Will you keep an eye on the foundry while I put on the pot for a brew? Stanley, being kind and obliging, said he could spare a moment or two. So George then began to explain to our Stan what he wanted the young lad to do. Now this here is the rim bulging hammer which by means of its own gravity displaces the valve grinding mould pump. To which Stan replied, Yes, I see. And this is the French spoking grommet, which measures the weight and the force of the overhead valve grinding knurl screw. To which Stan replied, Yes, of course. Now you see this big clock in the middle that shows when the wheel mould is full. Now here's what you do. When it says 32, you just give this big lever a pull. Now we'll only be gone for a moment, so don't worry, the engineer said. Are you sure that you understand what to do? Our Stanley just nodded his head. Well, at first the job seemed quite exciting. He pretended he was in control of an intergalactical spaceship at the head of a starship patrol. OK, Mr Spock, beaming up now. But after a while, he got weary and tired and fed up and bored. And he just couldn't keep from falling asleep. He fell so fast asleep that he snored. But the hands on the clock kept on turning. 32, 33, 34, past the red danger sign. 38, 39, till the mould wouldn't hold anymore. Bang went the mould pumping engine. Our Stanley woke up with a shout. Oh, heck. And Cyril and George rushed into the forge to see what the noise was about. Just look at that clock, shouted Cyril. By gummy, the engineer said. Stanley Bagshaw, have you let it pass 32? Our Stanley just nodded his head. Then George gave a pull on the lever and the machine made a strange clunking sound. Then what a surprise. Just look at the size, shouted George. It's near 14 foot round. Well, this bicycle wheel was enormous. What the heck shall we do? Cyril cried. Said George, it's quite clear that we can't leave it here. So they all pushed the big wheel outside. Mind the slope by the door, said our Stanley. But his cry of alarm was too late, because they pushed it too hard. It rolled into the yard and out to the old factory gate. Right down the middle of Pump Street it went, closely followed by Cyril and Stan. It rolled on down into Huddersgate. And that's when the real fun began.
Ron Meller was laying some concrete at the corner of Viaduct Street. He'd taken great care with the troweling, because he did like to do a job neat. He stood there, admiring the finish. Now that there is what you call flat. When the runaway wheel knocked him head over heels, right into the concrete, splat. I wonder why you did that. It rolled on past Robottom's cake shop and gave Charlie Clegg such a scare, he ran all of the way down the high street that leads to the old market square. In the square stood Police Sergeant Craddock, standing there in his usual place. A policeman's life is really rather dull. When Charlie Clegg came round the corner and squashed a cream tart in his face, the wheel rolled into the market. We'll see some fun now, Cyril shouted, as apples and pears got thrown in the air and people got brussled and sprouted. <laughs> Mrs Podmore was proud of her cheese stall and her wares were most carefully displayed. Till she saw the big wheel when she let out a squeal Woo! and became just a little dismayed. Up in the air went the groceries. Her customers weren't very pleased. One of them stuttered, I've been b b buttered That's nothing, she said. I've been cheesed. The wheel rolled on along Bread Street. Back up, Cyril cried. What a lark. It turned down the hill past the gasworks. It was heading for Huddersgate Park. In the park, it was peaceful and quiet. Just the sound of the birds and the bees and the squirrels that played in the branches of the birch and the sycamore trees. Old Edward, from down the allotments, it being the first day of May, was out for a stroll with his tortoise. It's a good day for nature today. He spotted a bird near the bandstand, a swallow, the first of the spring. The wheel hurtled by like a rocket. But old Ted didn't notice a thing. By the lake, Morris Ratcliffe was fishing, sitting there half asleep on his stool, till he saw the big wheel, and he let out a squeal and jumped up and fell into the pool. The wheel rolled into the playground, said Stanley. Hey, that's not allowed. It rolled to the top of the playground slide and disappeared into the clouds. Well, that's very odd, muttered Cyril. It's perhaps just as well, said our Stan. It must be quite near me tea time. I'd better get home to me gran. Have you had a nice time? said his grandma when our Stan got back home for his tea. I've just been a run around Huddersgate, Gran. Nothing much ever happens to me. Oh.